Hey Reed, Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and I am going to show you how I cut prescription lenses for your Ray-Ban. Which one is this? It is the 2140 QM color 1170 in the 50 eye size. 1170 of course the QM series. That can only be one thing. That can only be one thing. And that's a pink door of the explorer frame no sorry i just had fun cutting lenses for his nathan Le his son nathan although nathan did all the work i didn't do any of the cutting but this is yours your embossed ray-ban case i just like the soft furry even the case says made in italy Ooh, of course your ray-ban cleaning cloth junk mail um dental floss <laughs> A little bit of coal for Christmas. You get everything when you buy Ray-Ban these days. All right. Let me see. Let me set that down. This is what everyone came for. This is the price of admission. Of course, a little plastic sleeve to protect the leather from rubbing together while it was being shipped from Italy. But this is the leather Wayfair in the green. And, of course, you're going with polarized G15 lenses in here. This is the week of leather. I don't know what's going on in the world, but I like it. I'll just tell you that much. Hopefully you can see what's written on the inside. It is, of course, I can't even see when it's holding that close, but the Wayfair Genuine Leather. What does it say? Ray-Ban 2140 QM 1170. I can't see when it's up that high. That's why I keep pulling it away from me. And, of course, Wayfair made in Italy. You still got the triple barrel hinges that you get on all the Wayfarers very well built solid frame so I have removed your heavy glass breakable lenses and I have not woken up the, <laughs> this thing let me turn this on wake up wake up now wake up I'm gonna stall in fact by the way why do they call you Reed because all you do is watch my videos although I shouldn't complain I think this is about the fifth or twelfth or nineteenth pair that you've gotten from me so so this is what it looks like when you turn on the equipment. Do 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 stretch, 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 <laughs> make up stuff. Okay, yes, this frame originally made in 1952 and is a current model. They have only recently come out with the leather wafer within the past year, and I believe the release of the movie Fifty Shades of Grey has made this popular. So they need to make a movie Fifty Shades of Leather. Although it is only currently available in five, the black, light brown, dark brown, blue, and the green leather that you see here. I'm stalling. I'm stalling. Hey, in the meantime, you know what I can do? I can get your lenses dotted up. That's, that's what I'll do. Let me go down here. Your left lens, your right lens. Going over to my trusty Marco 101 lensometer. Got to turn that thing on too. Turn the axis wheel to 99. Put the power drum. Let's actually make sure everything is centered. Put the power drum on minus a quarter. Put your lens in, your right lens. Find the optical center. Check the sphere power. That looks good. Check your stigmatism correction. That looks terrible. But we're going to go with it anyway. And put some dots on there, which you can barely see. So I can barely see them too. Hang on, let me turn this on. This is going to be weird, weird looking in there for you. But it helps me magnify everything. One and two and three and that is the right lens let me do the same thing now for the left 55 there's a 55 on here somewhere there it is put the power drum on minus 50 find the spherical component of your lens check the astigmatism correction and put three dots on here uno dos 20. okay and that is your left lens. By now, hopefully the machine will have waken up. Hey, and it has. So, let's go ahead and put your Italian frame into my French edger. And hopefully they won't start fighting. Wake it up and hit trace. So, everyone wants to know, how does the machine know what shape the lens to cut? That's, this is why. This little stylus has popped up. And it's now tracing the shape of the right lens before moving over and tracing the shape of the left. I bet you can't know what happens next. That's right here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and nobody likes a rerun but hey that's what you're going to get today because you've already had 150 pair made i can't show you anything new other than i'll put the stylus on the left side hey that's new you don't ever see me do that but uh no everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality you buy a genuine authentic ray-ban frame 
and you'll receive free clear single vision prescription or fashion lenses. If you have vision insurance or flex dollars you're not using, you can get reimbursed with an awesome pair of Ray-Bans or Gucci, Prada, Versace, Coach, Michael Kors, Am I Leaving Anyone Else Out, Silhouette, many, many more. So let me type in your pupillary distance, which is 31 in both eyes. So I'm going to hit the little minus button there until we get 31 there. Let's go ahead and take your right lens. And actually, here's a good way to test to know whether lenses are polarized. You can move them in front of each other and you hear the term polar opposites. You should still be able to see through them. But when I rotate 190 degrees, it will go black because it blocks all the light that comes through. Now you see it. Now you don't. That's how you can test to see if they're polarized. So... Put the lens right there, those three dots, line them up. Oop, someone's paying me. Someone just bought something. Laura Berthoff just bought something for me. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> okay, so, and because I can't survive on just read alone, although it's close. I almost could. All right, so this is the block, a Jenny from the block, or as I like to call it, Jennifer O. Jenny. A little tribe called Quest reference there. All right, so I've got a little piece of paper here. I went to school for years to learn how to pull this little piece of paper off. You think you can do it at home? No, it's much harder than it looks. The silver button is a magnet. Let's see if it'll stick to the camera. Nope, what else can it stick to? Anything else? It's got to be magnetical. Come on, something in here. Nope, got no metal. All right, I'll just have a stick it there. All right, let me make sure everything is lined up. Lined up perfectly. Actually, just out of curiosity, what happens if I do take the lens and rotate it here? Nothing. I got nothing. Okay. With my left hand, you've never seen that. Boom! The block goes on there, and now your right lens is blocked. Let's do the same thing now for the left. Get everything lined up just perfectly. Make sure your optical center is just that centered. Or, you know, hey, we're old friends now. It can be off kilter. You won't mind. You know, one out of 20 can be bad, all right? <laughs> you can't expect all of my, the glasses I shipped to you are good. No, I'm just kidding. I shouldn't even joke about this. So if people are watching this for the first time, I don't joke about doing bad glasses. I do it every time. All right, hit the button with no things. Ooh. No, every pair of glasses is perfect before I ship it. Or Reed would not be buying his one millionth pair from me if that were the case. So, the cutting wheel. It's in there somewhere. It's going to go round and round until it grinds your lens down to its final shape. So let's go ahead and put the lens in using this magnet. By the way, how do you like my edger? Ooh. $40,000. Let me clean it off here. <laughs> $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go and buy one and put it on your coffee table. And then you can cut glasses at home. You won't need my bad humor anymore. So I'm going to take the lens in and stick it in the Chuck. The Chucky. Because I don't know the machine well enough to call it Charles. Wait. Put it in the Charles. God. I need some coffee. Somebody please help. See, that's why Nathan needs to come here and do all the work. I've just become a slouch. Okay, what am I doing? What am I doing? Where's my stylus? Let's pull up the shape of your lens. I'm not going to polish. I'm not going to put a bevel on the front of the lens. Actually, let me put a very light one because of the leather, and I'm going to put one on the back surface. Cutting it slowly. These are polycarb lenses and go, which is French for go. <laughs> but the door is going to close. The clamp's going to shut. Two white styluses, off-white by now. They're a little dirty. I need to wash them. But they're going to trace the shape of your lens as it goes around. It actually does it twice, measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly where to place the bevel so the lens fits inside the frame with no edge thickness exposed. Well, it's going to do as good a job as possible. Some people just crazy blind, got high astigmatism, got crazy stigs, and then it will show. Okay, so your lens is just about to touch down onto the cutting wheel. You will notice that flickering, glimmering light that is water running in the background. The polycarb cuts dry where plastic and high index cut wet. Water will kick in for the last 20 seconds just to wash away any optical debris. But your lenses are made out of polycarb. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. It is virtually unbreakable. It is bulletproof up to 22 caliber. If it wasn't bulletproof, could I do this? <laughs> It also has both UVA, UVB, and UVQ protection. You gotta really watch out about UVQ. Um, that stuff's a killer. But uh, unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours, you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes that never needs to be reapplied. 
So your lens is almost done, but wait, there's more. Order now and it will trace for a third time to precisely know exactly where to place the bevel so it fits best inside the frame, your frame or my frame, somebody's frame. It'll fit somebody, someone where. It's getting awfully quiet. Start back up. You need to pay the electricity bill, something ain't working. All right, so if you notice your lens is still completely flat, just like a nickel, I could take it out now and stand up on the counter. But now it's actually going onto the bevel wheel to get the knife-like edge. The super sharp knife-like edge. Also, actually in real life, it's very dim, like me. Very dull. Just like me. But as I tell people, it's sharp enough to cut a piece of wet tissue, providing you soak the tissue in a bucket of water overnight. With water running on it like that, and then press down with all your might. Put the lens on top of the tissue, drive over your lens with a car, and it just might cut through the piece of wet tissue. But no promises. All my lenses are high impact lenses. If you don't believe me, find your closest brick wall, get 20 feet away and run at it as fast as you can. Lean forward with your head, lift your nose up so you go straight into it. And if you can damage the lens, well, then I'll shake your hand. Because <laughs> I'll have to shake your hand. I won't be able to look you in the face. That'll be gross. You're going to be all bloody and beat up and black eyes. Now, I do send out a photo request to have your picture taken to put on the website. But if you've got black eyes and a bloody nose and missing a couple teeth, feel free to, to decline the photo request. Again, if you don't believe me, jump off a cliff and see if you can break your glasses but you have to be wearing them and i want video footage i'll let you borrow my my gopro camera all right so let's draw your lens off just try not to get any blood on my gopro Ooh, look that's a good one right there did you see it or oh, it fell off it fell off i'm scraping off that little optical debris with my thumbnail let's go ahead and get your green leather I'm green with envy, except I'm getting the blue and the black. All right, so I'm gonna tuck it in at the outside corner, push down the nose, and I don't wanna force it, so I'm gonna take a little bit more off. Uno, dos, trace, retouch. So I'm taking 1 15th of a millimeter, and for all my American friends out there, and I left my PD stick at home, come on, somewhere there's a PD stick. Anyone got a PD stick? There's one. To all my American friends, a millimeter is the distance between my thumbnails. I'm going to take 0.15, just over one tenth, but not quite two tenths, one fifth of a millimeter off around the circumference of your lens. How you like this? Eyeglass repairs. That's pretty convenient in case I break anything. Ah. <laughs> now this guy's great. He's been doing eyeglass repairs for about 20 years. I've actually apprenticed down there before, just when I was in my steampunk phase. I was making some steampunk goggles, prescription steampunk goggles, of which I have some here. Now, I did not make these. I bought these at a convention, but I was trying to actually make some of my own work, and I was doing some pretty cool stuff. So my other website is almost complete, rxsteampunkgoggles.com. But not yet. I built that one. It looks pretty bad. Yeah, I know. I've got some bad websites out there. Well, how bad do your websites look? Tell me that. Then we'll talk about how bad mine look. Yeah, I work 100 hours a week. I work seven days a week, Monday through Friday. I work from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. minimum, sometimes more, which translates to 15 hours a day. Then on Sundays, I'm lazy. I only work half a day, literally. I only work 12 hours a day on Saturday and Sunday. Add that up, you get 100 hours divide that and you get tired multiply that and you go crazy all right so let's dry that off run my finger around the edge put my finger in my nose run that around the edge see what I can find okay so let's tuck the lens in at the outside corner push down at the nose and the lens snaps in there just fine so let's go ahead and cut the left lens put that in there hit L for left and hit start when I can find it. And just like before the clamp shuts, the door closes, the lens moves up so it can be traced by the two green styluses. 
Okay, red, blue. I just want to see if you're paying attention. Off-white, cream, linen color, soft country linen. How's that? Okay, I'm out of similes. Stay tuned next week when I do start working with homilies. But first I have to find out what a homily is. Hamana, hamana, hamana. So in just a moment, your lens will touch down on the cutting wheel, although you can't see anything because it's all wet. So let's go ahead and work on your right lens. Let's take this block off. Pull off my double-sided adhesive sticker. Grab my flashlight and let's come down here. Move the old steampunk goggles aside. Dry your lens off there. Pat it dry and I'm gonna put the lens in in my Marco 101 lensometer in front of that red dot. I'm gonna move the axis wheel back to a 99. Check and we are getting minus a quarter. One tick mark away from zero. Check your astigmatism correction of what most of your prescription is and we're getting minus 150. As you know, read, but no one else does. The unit of measurement in the optical world is called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R, and goes in quarter increments starting at zero, which is Plano, non-prescription goes up from there, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, one, one and a quarter. I almost had Yahtzee. But so, you only have one step of minification. You are nearsighted. Without your glasses on, you see great up close. You only need them for far away. So, you need one step of far away vision, <laughs> but you need five steps of astigmatism correction. There is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. It's like saying someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. That is it. It is not a disease. It is not an affliction. It fluctuates. It comes and goes, but astigmatism is what makes sixes and eights look alike or the letters P and F. So you have one step for farsighted correction, but five steps for astigmatism correction. For a total of six steps and six times 0.25 is 150. What do you know? We're at minus 150. So your left eye is going to have the same combined power, but we're just going to get there differently. Two steps of farsighted correction, but only four steps of astigmatism correction. Think of astigmatism correction as a fine tuned knob on a scale from 0 to 180, which is what a straight line is. We're going to turn that knob just past the 90 meridian to 99. 180 is all the way over, zero is the starting point. And of course, 55 is just beyond the quarter mark at 45 and we're at 55. That's for your left eye, we're just gonna fine tune that. Of course, your Ray-Ban 2140 QM sells for $250, your polarized prescription lenses. Now, for 250, you're gonna get a clear pair of single vision prescription or non-prescription fashion lenses. But you wanted the polarized G15, so that's an additional $99. Your total is $349. And I thank you because my wife wants a new pair of shoes. She wants something with steel toes in it so she can kick my butt out the door when I make stupid videos. Okay. How about that weather today? It was 69 degrees here in Durham, North Carolina. Yesterday was 30, tomorrow's gonna be 30, and we're supposed to get almost an inch of ice falling, and we'll see how many branches that break off the trees. Now, where's your frame? Here it is down here. I found it. I found it. So, look at what I'm gonna done did. I'm gonna take your lens, I'm gonna tuck it in at the outside corner. Using my thumbs, I press down at the nose, it snaps right in. I'm gonna take off the Jenny. Drop that there. Pull off the double-sided adhesive sticker. Pat your lens dry. Go down, measure the prescription. Make sure it's cut right because the suspense is killing me. I've been drinking a lot of cough syrup today. Let's just see if... Uh... Of course, you couldn't tell it. Look at my hand. That's what cough medicine does to me. But the only thing is I cut lenses with this hand. <laughs> He wore a blazing saddle, he rose a da da da. Okay, um, where am I? Okay, minus 50, minus 50. Bienvenue, welcome, welcome, come on in. And then we get a minus 150. Come on, you remember high school algebra? Good, I'm glad you do, because I've forgotten it all. But what I do, if you had someone borrowed 50 cents, then they borrowed another dollar, they'd have enough to go buy me a beer. No, they would have a minus 150, and that's where we are at again. 150 is my lucky number. I'm going to go play that in the lottery. 
Now, can we still see the pupillary distance? Yes, it's stuck at the R. So your pupillary distance is 32. I'm gonna, where's that PD stick? Where's my broken stuff, my broken glasses? So, place the PD stick on my against my thumb in your right lens and we hold it up to your left lens. We're getting 62, so that is made perfectly. I couldn't have made this better if I made it myself. So now's the time in the video that I explain to everyone, free shipping. But when you do get these in the mail, there is a very small chance that these could be too loose or too tight. However, there is an 80% chance that one side is gonna sit higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other, and I am no different, and I'll show you in just a moment. But because of that fact, that is why 99% of all the optical shops in America will do free adjustments if you ask them. So if these are too loose, too tight, or crooked, just stop by your local optical shop and they'll adjust them for you. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, when I press down on mine, they wobble. And when I stick them in a hole, they stand up like that. So I won't stick them in a hole anymore. So let me flip them over, press down, there is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly. And they does. Check to make sure the temples are not askew or a ski or anything else. And that they're not ajar. Actually, I guess they are ajar now. Now they're closed. Ajar, closed, ajar. Okay, so that's it. If anyone has any questions, like why am I so stupid? Just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Read, I hope you enjoyed watching as I got really silly again when I made your Ray-Ban 2140 original leather Wayfarers. And the color, what color is that? 1170 in the 50 eye size with polarized G15 lenses. And everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.